Welcome to Bigfoot Society. In this episode, I talked to Lori about her multiple Bigfoot encounters in the Blue Ridge Mountain area of the western side of Virginia. If you have more information regarding Bigfoot or other cryptids in the same area, please reach out immediately to me after this episode. And if you've had an encounter that you'd like to be on the show to share with, please contact me at BigfootSociety at gmail.com. Also, make sure you check out patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society, where you can become a supporting member and get extra Bigfoot Encounter episodes every single week. And now let's get on with the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, we've got the privilege of talking with Lori tonight. Uh, She's a listener from the Blue Ridge Mountain area of Western Virginia. Uh, Lori, I'm so glad to have you on the show tonight. I'm going to go ahead and give it right over to you uh, so you can start sharing because it sounds like you've got a lot to share. (laughs) Thanks, Jeremiah. I appreciate it. All right. Well, first thing I just, I want you to know is I'm disabled. I've got a neck injury, so I'm kind of, you know, can't do much and stuff. And my parents are, are elderly, so I moved in at their house to try to help them because I'm around all day. And unfortunately, my dad just passed about two months ago. But that being said, I have a large family and I have four older sisters and we all live within three miles of my my parents. You know what I mean? Except one. She lives in a different part of the state. But so I about two years ago, and it was this time of year, I can tell you I went to let her dog out at her house. Now, she's a realtor and then they. She has a lot of rental properties and stuff, but this house she bought is a mile from her main home, but it's a farm and it's a 51 acre farm. And she, we grew up on a dairy farm and her being the oldest and stuff, she bought horses for all of our children to come, a place for all of us to come and have fun with our kids and grandkids and stuff, you know, but anyway. Her dog was over there, and she had to work and show a house or whatever, and, and she wanted me to go let him out because, you know, he had to go to the bathroom. So me, I was I was like, oh, that's cool. I'll go over there and, and let Cooper out, you know. Well, I have my own dog, and he's as fierce as a pit bull, but he's a little palm cheese, is what they call them, Pomeranian chihuahuas, and they bark at everything. I swear you can't, you can't, a leaf can't move outside, and he's on it, you know what I mean? And me being a sarcastically delicious person that I am, I'm always like, you tough dog, you tough dog, egging him on. So, Because I don't care. I want him to let me know, you know. Anyway, so I had Louie, that's my dog, and I went over there to my sister's farm. And I called one of my friends on Messenger, the Facebook Messenger, and had the video chat up showing her the little farm, little farmhouse my sister had just bought and stuff. And they had fenced in a bunch of acres, I don't know, probably about 30 acres and had like four different pastures and built, they were building this, they had just finished this big, huge barn for the horses and stuff. And so I called the horses up to the fence and stuff and I had brought a piece of apple or something with me and had Louie on the leash and I was talking to my friend on the phone. I'm not going to say her name because I didn't ask her permission, you know, to use her name or anything. On Messenger, and I had it up in the air, you know, how you have it up, look, talking to them, and there it's up above your head. And I was turning the, the phone around, showing her the farm and the horses, these two rescue horses my sister had just got. And she looks back, and, and, and it's like, what's that? What's that behind you? What's that black thing back there? And, and so I looked through the camera. And I see something black back there. And of course, first thing you think is bear out here because we got bears and stuff. And so, but I'm I'm not worried about unless it's a sow with the babies, you know. I'm not worried about no bears because I've seen them before and had them around the house and everything, you know. And just mainly they usually just went off. So I kind of turned around and I I just I just lost it. I lost it, man. I I just my whole shell on my egg cracked. You know, I'm screaming. It was crazy. This thing was standing there and in broad daylight on the other side of this brand new barn, taller than the gutter on it, and the gutter's seven foot tall. You know what I mean? I knew it was it's just looking at me. And all I could do was start screaming at it, get out of here, you know, go away. And 
And I was like, this is our home and there's babies here. And they're not going to mess with none of us. I'll kill you, you know? And, and I was like, constantly just run, like running, walking fast, as fast as I could run, walk. I'm just able to can't run to the door to get in the house. Cause it was, I just, this thing was just huge. It was, it was, it was skinny, but it was huge. I, I that's, I, it was, I don't even know how to tell you what I, what I can tell you about how big it was, the frightening and in the sense of, of doom that I felt that it could, it, it was, it was not good. This thing was evil is what I felt from it. And I was like, and, and I'm, I grew up on, you know, and I, I spent my teenage years stuff in the city in Richmond and stuff, but I, I live in the rural part. I had best, best of both worlds. So I'm street smart, country smart, and I kick your ass. You know what I'm screaming? And I will. If it comes down to it, I don't care if I am disabled. I'm go- you're going to know I was there, you know, especially if you're going to mess with my babies. But anyway, I, I just, and I felt like I couldn't look at it. I just well, didn't want to meet eye contact. So I kept it in my peripheral vision, and I got in the house. And I was, I was, I was just so sure. And my friend Stephanie was still on the phone, and I was like, "Did you see that?" And she's like, "I couldn't not make out what it was." And you know, and I, and I was told her, you know, I told her what it was. So that was a, a freaking big butt, in other terms, I'm being nice. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I was, I was like, "You will not understand how big it was," and it, and it, it just really made me feel so small and so helpless and so. That thing could have killed me in two seconds, and it one but it was like two hundred feet from me. I mean, it it's like it just stood there, like like almost in, a, in like you couldn't believe it saw me, you know. I don't know, but anyway, I got in the house and I stayed in there because I was I didn't want to go to my jeep because that thing was outside. Then I was thinking the other animals are out there, and so I stayed in there probably about 45 minutes, just freaking out. I don't even remember what I was saying to her. I don't remember that conversation. I don't remember talking, you know, just my, it blew my mind. And so it got, it got to the point where the dog had to go bad. And I, and I kept looking for it. You know, it had gone, it run off to the left or something is what Stephanie had said or whatever. But I kind of was like, yeah, well, you don't know. You ain't here. You know, I'm going to keep a check. Yeah, I'm not going to just go out there because you said it run off. And, you know, I, I just was felt safe, safer in the house, even though I felt like it could just take its turn, you know, rip the heart. This farmhouse, old, you know, here in Virginia, we've got a lot of these old houses, old two-story farmhouses and and stuff that's old and, you know, I just felt like it could just punch that darn house right on over and it, it, it would could plow me in or peel back my darn car like a can of sardines and get, you know, it won't know stopping this thing as big as it was. The darn chest on that thing I know was bigger than four foot. And I'm not exaggerating. I mean, that it probably was bigger than that, but it was, it was, it was like a, but it was skinny looking. But it was muscular, but it was a, it went fat. I just, I don't know how to explain it on that. Anyway, I got off the phone with her and I called my, like I said, I got four sisters. I'm the baby. And I called my sister, that's the second youngest to me. And I, and I told her, I had to tell, I had to talk to somebody. I couldn't deal with this crap by myself. I mean, I just couldn't. I didn't want to be alone with my thoughts. I thought I had them lost in my mind. I thought that they were going to put me in a straight jacket or something or lock my ass up because I had a, I, I started doubting, you know, what did I, you know, I just, maybe I didn't see it, you know, maybe I was just, you know, I don't know. I just, it, it just, mind screwed me. So I called her and then see around there, they were, uh, had been building up on the pastures and stuff and they were building a pond. They built the pond and then, down in the bottom, there's a creek that runs through it. And I should say this is on a big lake that has a nuclear power plant on it. And um, so the lake, you know, was, was is, is right there at our house. You know, not even three city blocks. You can walk to the one of the guts of the lake. You know, it's right there. And so they, they the creek that feeds the lake runs through their property. And the spring, I think, starts up behind them. But anyway, they're making a bigger pond down in another pasture. For the horses and stuff so there, there's been contractors there with you know doing stuff so 
it's not surprising to see people working around there. And I saw this thing, somebody, I thought it was this big dude coming up this the road beside the, the fence of the pasture on the other side of the barn, walking up the road. Cause it looked like a, a big fat dude with a white shirt on. With You know what I mean? That's, that's what it looked like. And But he won't so close. Like, I couldn't even see, I didn't see the features of its face. Either one of them. I just could just see that. I couldn't look at them. I wouldn't look, I just couldn't look at them. I couldn't. I looked down, but I could keep them in my my peripheral. But when that one was walking up, like I said, I thought it was a big dude. And um, I was telling my sister, I was like, oh, my God, he's coming up that way where that thing was. I said, what should I do? You know, I, I want to tell him that, that I just saw that thing there and to be careful. You know, and my sister's like, well, drive over there. And I was like, well, I was just, I was so shaken up. I was shaking so bad. And, and literally my legs and everything, I was shaking my whole body. And, and I had, I, I got Cooper before I got him done and I threw him back in the house and I threw Louie up in the, in my Jeep. And I was like, all right, well, I think I'll go. I'll t- I got to tell him, you know, I just, I was worried about where he was walking at. And just the closer this, that person as I thought got, the more I realized how big it was. It was, it was, it, the fence didn't even come up to its waist. And this fence I had, I can put, it comes up to my shoulders, you know, it's a pasture fence and it's a, it's a cattle fence, like with wood, but it's a, it's the taller ones because of the horses. And I was like, I can't believe it. I, I think that's another one. And it, and it was, it, it, my sister's like, go over there, drive over there. And I was like, screw you, you know, you crazy. I'm not doing that crap. You want to do that? You come up here and sit and wait for it. But I, I'm getting hell out of here. And I, and I backed the Jeep up and I, and I sped, I mean, like I said, Richard Cuddy would have been proud of me because I hauled ass down that gravel dirt road and got on the, the hard surface. And it's like I lost time. I, I lost, I went up the road to the, there's this grocery store. It's like eight miles up, eight to 10 miles up the road. And I don't even know why I went there as far as why I ended up there. Cause that, that's like going away from going home. And I, I kind of just, I was in this, in the parking lot in the last, parking spot in the last of the row in front of the grocery store and I couldn't get out my car because it was all of a sudden it was getting dark and I had this was at lunchtime that that this stuff happened and I couldn't get out of my car I was scared to death I got couldn't I, I I had called a couple of my friends and they they were they they told me that they couldn't console me because I was so but I don't remember talking to them. And I had sat there, I don't, God knows how long, and, and it was getting dark and I, my gas was running out. And I was caught, I had called two people because I was scared to get out of my car and put gas in my car. Cause out here, you know, they got the little wool uh, stores and stuff. You ain't got no big store where people are going to be, you know, a bunch of people around. And so I, I ended up, I got, I used my AAA and got the roadside of service to come and give me gas. And I went back home, you know, and when I got here, I, I just, I couldn't, I, I just couldn't think after that. I just felt like I was losing my mind. You know, I, I mean, it's been crazy. <laughs> That's the first one that I knew for sure what I was seeing, you know, can we that's talk? the first incident. <laughs> do you mind if we talk about that for a little bit <sighs> that's fine go okay. ahead i'll try it. that's that is so so wild the first creature that you saw were you able to look and <laughs> see its face at all no i could i couldn't i couldn't see its face because it was it was lunchtime and it was so sunny. It was this time of year two years ago, and it it was the sun was was so bright and and I had the camera on and when I turned that way, it frightened me so bad, Jeremiah. I just I I just I did not make eye con- I made sure I did not make eye contact with it, mm. but I kept it in my I could see it, but I looked down. You know, I was I was screaming at it so bad. I I, I mean I cussed this thing from. Lord knows from Timbuktu to BFE, 
You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, I cussed him I, and I screamed at it. And I mean, I'm a mama, a sister, a grandma, you know, a cousin, a daughter, and I'm fierce about my family. Yes, and my family means everything. And, and, you know, you mess with me, you mess with my whole family. And that's uh-huh. just how it is. And this was my sister's house for our whole family to have like our reunions and our meeting places. And if somebody came in from out of town, they'd stay, they stay there, you know, I'm screaming and, and my, you know, I felt, I, I just, it's some just, it was a feeling that would not let me look it in the eye. I, I just couldn't, I could not, I was, the fierce, this of me not doing it was so much that, that I kind of, I wanted to put my hand up to block it. You know what I mean? Block the sight of it, but it didn't. I, I kind I was trying to make my way to the house, and my dog. What was crazy is he's a Chihuahua mix, like I said, and they bark at everything. I mean, you can't even the pine tree a pine needle on it move, and he's barking, you know. And he did not react to nothing. He just kind of like held his head down and and didn't do nothing. Didn't bark to nothing, and it freaked me out because that's not my dog. My dog thinks he's ten foot tall and bulletproof. And bites you on on two knees, you know what I mean? It's crazy. I, I it it was just frightening. I didn't see the eye, didn't make contact. I mean, didn't you know? I didn't see its face. I, I could tell you the outline of it, how tall it was, and its build, but I can't tell you facial. It was black, solid black. Did you notice anything about any features from looking at the outline, like maybe shape of the head or arm? Anything about the, the arms or anything? Uh-huh. Well, the the arms were they were long, like they like normally you hear people say because they were long, and, but the head it, I it just looked ground to me. I mean, because it was facing me, it was no kind of you know side profile none. Because it, it like I said, it looked like I surprised it or something, or it walked up and saw me and was like, oh, you know, that's the kind of feeling that at first I got, like I like it walked up on me and didn't realize I was there, you know. And, but like I said, as soon as I I saw it, I just couldn't. Something was like, don't look at look at it. Don't look at it. You know, I just felt that feeling, so I didn't. And the fear and the then the the fright was just unreal. I, I was so scared. I, and I'm not a scared person. I'm an outside person. I'm usually outside all the time. I, I mean, I used to go, you know, in the woods all the time and and outside and built Brunswick stews, having fires in the, you know, and all that and and flower beds and gardens and, and I can't do that now. You know, I don't do it. I just, it's just, I can't tell you what it looked like as far as its facial features. Its head, as far as I can remember, was not, I didn't see any kind of cone shape or nothing. I I didn't pay that much of attention. I don't want to get the hell out of its way. I want to get away from it. I didn't, you know, I'm tempted to have myself hypnotized so I could see what it looked like, you know? Right. Uh, So (laughs) what were, what were, what were the details that you noticed then that made you think that this could be a Bigfoot and not something else like a dog man? Well, I didn't, I, I don't know. I don't really know. How to tell you that it wasn't, it wasn't a dog, man, but it wasn't, didn't have ears sitting up on its head. There you go. Okay. I mean, yep. there was no, yep. like, you hear the, them saying that they got dog heads or whatever. This didn't look like it had a dog head. Mm. I mean, it really didn't. It, it just wouldn't look round, you know? Yeah, no, that, that makes I perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I, the, I couldn't stare at it. I just, I didn't want to make it, I didn't want to look in its eyes. And I mean, my long hair just does cover my red neck. I'm telling you that right now. And I will look somebody in the eye in a minute and, and, and stand for my truth because that's how I was raised. Sure. You know, and, and I'm not going to be rude or anything or start anything with anybody, but I'm not scared. But I was scared of this thing. And, and I mean, just it, it came over me and, and I'm shaking now. I, I can't even I can't even tell you. I have never known terror in my life. Or fright, the true meaning of it until that day. I had never, I mean, it was horrific. I, it, it, it scared me. See, I, I'm, like I said before, I, in my 
email stuff. It's made me scared of the dark. Everything in the dark. And every, I can't, I can't even go outside. If it starts getting dark, I'm inside. I, I'm locking in doors and shutting the windows. Don't you come knocking around my house because I'm going to shove the gun so far up somewhere and you're going to die. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm serious. These things, these things and the feeling I got off of it was so freaking evil. I mean, I didn't feel like this was no Harry and Henderson cuddly little knock, give you some wood knock, you know, knock, knock, hey, hey. You know, what's up? No, <laughs> this, this thing made me feel like it, it like I'm gonna hurt you. You know what I mean? Like I could just squish you and, and, you know, but it didn't. And that's what I'm clinging to. So <laughs> Absolutely. it could have, but it didn't. Was it making any sound at all that you heard? No. no? So it's completely not, quiet. Not, yeah. Just stand there. And, and that's the weird thing too. But see, the wind was blowing. And we're and where we live in Western Virginia, and in, in the I'm not right up on the on the mountains, but I'm more in the foothills. You go walking in these woods, you'll fall in a ravine in a minute. You're not paying attention where you're going, or old mo, um, coal mine, or well. You know what I mean? You have to pay attention where you you're at. And the wind whips through here. You know, sometimes, especially this time of year, it's March, come in like a line and out like a lamb. You know. But I mean, you know, and when it does blow and stuff, I, being that we got, you know, we you know, still have, I didn't hear nothing, just the wind. I couldn't hear any noise. I didn't, you know, and that's why I didn't hear it come up on me or nothing, you know. And I'm not stupid. I've been hunting. I've, I've run the dogs and everything. I mean, I, I know how to do anything you want to do to survive out in the woods. That's how I was raised, you know. And, and you know. I didn't hear nothing, and it, it it's it's just it has freaked me out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I didn't. I, that's what bothers me too. I couldn't see its face. You know, I couldn't get a picture of its face. But the height, the from it not you know as big as it was, I still got the impression it was like a teenager, like a like a younger one. Uh, it was it was lean, but it was thick. But it was leaner than what you would imagine. The proportion of it, the height of it, you know, and the width of it, you would think that it would have. It, it wouldn't look lanky, because but it looked lanky. But it won't. When saying lanky, it doesn't even. It won't lanky, but it was lanky. <laughs> I mean, these things are huge, you know. Oh, absolutely, and. It, it sounds like you're not the only person that has seen them in that area. Yeah, I, you know, I just noticed on a they got them apps for the neighborhoods and stuff. Yeah. And this guy <laughs> down the road had two kids. <laughs> two kids to have seen his two kids have seen them. And I and I told I answered them on there. And I told him, I said, y'all might think that I've cracked my, you know, my shell. This egg is cracked or whatever, but it's hard boiled (laughs) and strong enough to admit that, yeah, they're real. And y'all need to know, because that's the first thing that comes to my mind is all my family, all these, my boys and my family, my son, Yeah, they all go hunting, you know, they go fishing, you know, they, they work construction and, and, you know, they are out there in the woods. They're all forever. We're all forever doing stuff outside you know throwing horseshoes you know having a bonfire cooking brunswick stew and you know over each other's house my family's very social with each other and it's it's just it frightens me you know but that being said i i haven't told everybody in my family sure i'm slowly but surely doing it. Sure. my sister that owns that farm you know she a week later well before i saw them Something that barn's brand new, and it has the metal roofing, but it has the hardwood beams and everything in it. Right, the main beam that runs down the center of that barn, something cracked it, pushed it up, and my sister they couldn't figure out what did it, and she was like, I was thinking maybe the horse could do it, but she, they can't reach that high. Something pushed the, in the center of that beam. That beam is you can't you know you can just about wrap your arms around, but that's how big it is. Big old, I think it's a hickory tree that they have as the beams. You know what I mean? And it that's and it's hardwood, 
And to push that thing up in the middle of it and, and the way it's damaged that barn, that's crazy. That's no horse. They ain't no horse going to do that, you know? And then she saw the two, she said it was two red lights in her, in her pasture. And they have them ATVs that she can ride in. And they've made roads all around the pasture so they could ride the fences, right? Well, she rode to go see what it was. And it, it left, whatever the lights went on or whatever. She couldn't tell what it was. And she told her husband, and he said it must have been somebody up there with some kind of lights looking around. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> Red? It, I don't think so. You know, it ain't no going to, why would he walk around like that? They want to see something or do something. They ain't walk around with no red light in the middle of a pasture. You, you know, you're going to be seen anyway. Use your brain, you know? Why would you do that? If you're in the middle of a pasture and you're using a red light, I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of color it is, that you're still going to be seen. So uh, why would they specifically have two red lights up there? It doesn't make sense to me. And then she's heard, then she said that the coyotes and stuff, we have a bad problem with them. Coyotes and panthers, we have panthers here and, and mountain lions too, and bobcats and all that shit. She said that that stuff's been going off around her house really bad after I saw them. And it, it just freaks me out. And I, I still haven't told her because she's not going to believe me. She's the oldest, I'm the youngest. You know what I mean? She's like, she's more like a parent to me than a, <laughs> in some ways, you know, she's not going to, she's not going to believe me. So you, you know? haven't told the, the, the sister that actually owns the farm, what happened, what you right. saw. Really? But I've told, yeah. I've told two of this, my oh. other sisters and I'll know that my other sister told her to be, a, be aware of bears. Cause she says, that's what I saw. You know, she's like, you saw a bear. And I'm like, that won't no damn bear. I, I, I'm i telling you, I have had, I lived off dirt road, and I had blackberry bushes all down my darn road. And I lived in the middle of the dirt road, and my other sister lived at, one of my other sisters lived at the end. And my house was, up to the hard surface road, it was probably about half a mile, you know what I mean? And the whole, my whole driveway was filled with damn blackberry bushes that you could ride through like a maze and, and stuff. And we had these two male bears would come every year and a sow with two cubs would come around every year. And my sister, my brother-in-law had hunting cams all around our properties. Cause mine hooked down to theirs and I'd let them hook hunt on my five acres connected to theirs, you know? And I mean, I've been around bears. I know how they, I, I'm, I'm not frightened of them. I don't want to mess with no, especially no sow, but I mean, I know what a bear looks like, you know? And this thing was, was not a bear, you know, it wasn't a bear. I can tell you the height of that thing the, and the way just, just its body. It was not a bear, you know, <laughs> it's just ended. I got insulted, you know, I will really did. I got pissed off because I mean, why the hell would I lie? I, I mean, you know, I'm in my fifties and I mean, I hate to say that I'm still, I'm still cute as hell though. I'll tell you the truth, <laughs> but I mean, why would I lie? Why would I lie? You know, I don't have no reason to lie. These right. people, I was like, right. you call me, you more or less call me a liar. And she's like, don't get, don't get mad. You know, and I was like, no, don't get stupid. You know, you, my sister, you going to sit there and not believe me. You know, don't be stupid. <laughs> I just, I'm so blunt. And, but, you know, I, I, that's the best way to me to be in my world. I, I don't play. I don't play no exactly. game. Yeah. You know, don't pull no drama. I don't got time. I, I'll walk away. Yeah. You know? Lori, I want to go well, back. <laughs> I want to go back for a minute to how you were talking about it was like one of those apps where there are the neighbors on it. Can you mm -hmm. remember exactly what it, it was that that gentleman said was happening on? on his oh, property well it just, just happened about uh, a couple months ago about two months ago it said i know that this con this he posted like something like i know that that this topic is controversial and probably going to get a lot of heckling and and reddit you know ridicule and stuff and he said but has anybody noticed any type of sasquatch beings around this area my two children which are seven and nine have seen these things twice and that's what worries me, you know, and especially when there's kids, you know, you know, you're not going to do that. <laughs> not if I'm around. I don't care who you are. You treat that kid wrong. You're going to hear something from me. Absolutely. You know, I got to track that guy down. And especially, 
Uh, yeah, it's on it's next door or something is what that the name of the yeah app is. Anyway, yeah, and you know what's funny? The the where that farm is, right? My son's pro, my son was renting a house before he just moved into a house and they bought a house, but they were renting a house, and his the back of my sister's property is is in sight from where he was living. So he won't live in less than, uh, as the crow flies, a mile from that house, right? And I went and had to, he got, they got married, and this was two years ago, and I went to stay with my grandpuppies. They had a staff sire pit bull down there, a blue one, and a big white grand Pyrenees. And they were there, they stay in the house or they, you know, or you take them outside and stuff. But I went and, and stayed with the week down there to take care of the dogs. And I was just, I don't know even know how to tell you. I, I, they, I was there and the first night, nothing happened, nothing, you know, I, but I was nervous. I can get this, I get this feeling. I, I can tell when they're around now, I can tell and it, and it's bad. It's a, it's not a good feeling. It's not, I don't know how to even tell you why, but I've done what I drank. Maybe it got too close to the damn lake water and I'm glowing or something, you know? I have no idea, but it's, you know, I, I, I don't know why, but I get a feeling. And I was there, and the second night I was there, I've been, and also, I, I've been waking up, and I still do it, at 3 o'clock every night, 3 o'clock every night. But since I, this has happened, it's been two years now. I don't get a full night's sleep for nothing. And it's, it's, I just don't know why. I, 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 you know, I would think I would wake up at five because I used to have to wake up at five in the morning and go to work before I became disabled. And, you know, you get in the routine and you do it just automatically. But this, this is that three o'clock. I can look at the clock every night, three o'clock, and I'm up. It's crazy. But I was at my, my son's house and at, at three o'clock in the morning, some hit the the backside of his house so hard. I swear, I thought that a car or something hit hit the house. And the thing is, is my son. Well, I don't. I got to back up a little bit because from from his house, his rental p- property, as the crow flies, we used to live in a house before I came disabled. I lost my home, and but it's a mile from there, and on the dirt road, like I was telling you, he and his first wife saw something run across the road in front of them when they were coming down the road. And, and they didn't know. He didn't tell me. He just looked at me and said, Mama, I don't know what, what it was. And then he goes, well, no bear. And it was on all fours. And so he told me. And then later he, he kept, you know, he he wouldn't talk about it or nothing. But then he was like, it, it had to be a bear. You know, he didn't want to say what, he didn't say what it was or nothing. Well, he told me that and living in that house, everything that there's been things that happened that I know now that I didn't know then was related to them. I had five acres behind me was a 200 acre farm across the gravel road from me was 500. It's like, a no, it's not 500. It's, it's probably about 200 acres of woods. And then across the hard surface road at the end of my road is what they call Bear Island land. Well, it was, they, but it was, it's full of, that, that's like 500 acres. So I was in the middle of the woods, you know, and I'm screaming. And we would always have bonfires, fires all the time outside and back behind our house and playing music out our, the shed and, you know, the shop and stuff and having people ever. Cause when you live in the country, that's what you do. You don't, you know, you don't go to bars, you go to your friend's house, you know play park or drink or whatever, or just go see family. I've always had people over. but And I would sit out there. Hell, I'd sleep out there sometimes. Fall asleep out there and down hammock. Don't even worry about it. Well, I was staying, and after he said that stuff and and was telling me about it, my daughter-in-law had my grandbaby, and I stopped, I smoked. And so I stopped smoking in the house, and I was staying on the front porch of my house smoking a cigarette. And I didn't cut the lights on, and, you know, because out here the stars – you can see, even if it's, you know, I mean, it gets dark, dark, where you can't see your head, hand in front of your face. But if it's a clear night and it's, you know, you can see by the moonlight. Well, it was darker 
with no moon, but I, the stars were still out. And I was smoking a cigarette on the front porch. Something, it felt like it was in my face, growled at me. And it growled this deep growl that was deeper than a coyote growl. Because I've heard them, they've come up on our property and they're not scared. They'll they'll come at you, and 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 it won't no bear. It was a vibrating growl, and it felt like it was in my face. It felt like it was in my face doing that. And so I just I threw the cigarette and went back in the house real quick and locked the door. I didn't I didn't think about that. You know what I mean? And then it got to where I kept feeling feeling uneasy in my yard, and that's that bothered me because I, I was always outside. Like I said, we. We just were outside people. Got a garden and I had flower beds and you know cutting the grass and and you know what I mean. It it was crazy, but I didn't I didn't think about you know being that it could be a bigfoot or anything. Back then I was thinking well probably bear because them bears had been around our house. But I had we bush hogged all them blackberries down because I didn't want the bears coming up on my property. You know, because they will, they'll come up and screw your shit up if you got, out here, you don't, you don't got a trash service, you have to take your stuff to the dump and all that. And I would put my trash in the back of my, I had a little ranger I'd use just for the trash. And I just, we cut them down so it wouldn't be any opportunity to draw them closer to our property. Took all my bird feeders down because they eat the bird seed and all that. But this thing was, it just, it growled and it felt like it was, it was almost nose to nose to me as, 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 it, that's what it felt like, but I couldn't see it. I couldn't see, you know. I probably jumped off all that. What you just asked me, I've got so much in my head that I don't want to forget because I want to. I want to get all these things out because it's it's so it's it's freaked me out and made me feel like I done lost my mind. Mm. Like I told my friend, I need a big old coat for Christmas, and I said the one to make you wrap yourself around and tie in the back. No, you're, you're great. You're great. Um, I, I did want to ask something about, so the growl that was right next to you, you said that you, you all, you felt the growl, like it affected you. Yeah. yeah. And see, I was up on a, it was four steps up onto my, it was like a, a deck porch. I had a covered porch on the front. And with like what they call them pergolas with with the I could have vines. You know, it was an open end port. It was half 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 covered, but half with like a pergola where I could I had wisteria and stuff growing up on it. And I it it but it felt like it was in my face. And for it, you know what I mean. But I was uh, I wasn't on the it wasn't level to the ground. I was up. You know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I felt like it was right in my face doing it. But it, but it won't, you know, because it, it wasn't there. I mean, there was nothing in, in my face, but it was so. It, but it felt like it was right there in my face, and it made I could feel it in my body, the mm. growl. Wow! And and I didn't realize that that has anything to do with this stuff until here, recent, you know, two two years ago, and when I started really looking into this stuff, you know, because it it freaked me out. It's really made me question my sanity. I mean, in all honesty, and that's the worst feeling. That is the worst feeling. People don't realize what this stuff does to people. And, you know, for them to be so funny and, and to crack jokes about, you know, ha ha, you know, Bigfoot, ha ha. Well, you're the dumbass. In my world, you the dumbass. You're going to laugh about it. You'll see. And that's what, you know, they, like on that app that some people were trying to be hecklers and funny. And I said, you know what? You think this shit's funny? I said, them poor babies. You know, I said, but you know what? It seems to me this shit's picking up. And I said, more people don't see them. And I said, and it's been around here and you're a hood, bro. I said, you're going to see. And then I'm going to laugh in your face. You know, how dare you? This is a child, children. You know, how dare they? You know, just it drives me crazy. I just don't know what to do about it. I, these things are not our friends. <laughs> I mean, they're not, you know, they ain't still going to be your buddy. You don't want to, you want to feed them and go out there and wood knock and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I got, I got some, some lakeside property in Arizona for you. You know, what you want? Right. People uh, are stupid to me with that. I was going to ask you, <laughs> have you, have you thought at all, you know, what do you consider uh, these creatures to be like? When you think of Bigfoot in your mind, are, are you more you're thinking of a type of human or an ape or something 
way different than both of those things? Well, I know about the DNA testing of the mobile catch and stuff. And I've read the stuff. I've read it because I, I just, you know, you go tell me something that's cool. But if I've got access to read it and, and to see something, I'm going to read it and get information for myself, too, as well. You know, I'm going to check up because I'm not going to, you know, I'm not that gullible. And I'm not, I'm not saying that people are gullible or by no means. I'm not throwing, throwing slinging words and nobody's throwing fist up or nothing. I'm just saying, if you can check it out, do your own digging, right? And, and being that I live in this first state of this great country that we live in, you know, history and the Bible Belt, you know, I went to Sunday school. I, I've raised um, Presbyterian and you know, baptized and all that. I, I know my Bible and I can tell you this. They are, I feel that they are from the Bible. You look at there's there's, I, but I can't tell you what they are. Because there's like three stories in the Bible that this can relate to. Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel. God marked Cain and banned him to walk upon this earth and to be shunned. And all his seeds that he says as far as his children and everything that is to him will be marked with the beast. And they say that it's the number 666, but it does says that he is he's going to be marked where he's not going to be welcomed i mean people are going to know so there's if you and then of course the nephilim you know and then there's another one and and plus it talks about the giants you know david and goliath i mean you know i mean come on people they pick and choose what they want to choose out of the bible what to believe well then why do they why do they even have it in there why does god have it if you're going to pick and choose what you want out of a fairy tale, I mean, you know, or even a true documentary, you know, or if you're just going to pick and choose what you want, then you're not doing yourself any, any favors. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to go back to school. Your mama didn't drop you. She threw you when you was a little baby. You know, <laughs> I'm just, I don't understand, you know, why would they, why would some people not believe when it's written in the scriptures? Yeah, yeah, I I agree with you there. You know, if it's a if it's a thing where you say you're going to believe something, you got to believe the whole thing, you know, and you can't you can't just leave out the the quote quote, weird stuff because it doesn't fit your, you know, clean version of of the Bible. So (laughs) your repertoire (laughs) doesn't fit your narrative. But the thing is, is there's 21 books to the Bible under under the darn Vatican that they they picked and choose not to put in it. So you go to the book of Enoch. I mean, if you read all that and listen, you can go on YouTube. If you don't feel like reading or don't have time to read, you know, somebody will read it to you and and listen to it. It tells you. I mean, I couldn't tell you this. I didn't believe in ghosts either or nothing like that because, you know, anything woo-woo that's going to scare you or nothing like that, God bless my mama. She, you know, oh no, baby, there's nothing like monsters or ghosts or nothing. But uh, my mother saw my grandmother after she passed. So, and I was like, Mama, it says Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I mean, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. We say Holy Ghost. I mean, come on. You know, I, I just think that things are, since this, this has changed me, I have been, <laughs> I don't want to say woke, but I have been spiritually awakened from this. And I'm going to tell you this, things are not as it seems. And for people to be herded like sheep, shame on the, the people that are doing that. Shame on the other, the higher beings or their stupidity to do that. Because you know what? There's more of us than there are of them. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and, and don't think that, like I heard, I know the government knows about these things. I know they do. Because if they did know about them, they damn sure would be looking into it, being a threat on the American soil. You know what I mean? Here, now, you know? And for them not to even be concerned with anything like that means they know it. They already know it. They don't need to talk to us to get that information. I mean, well, that's just the way I feel. And, I, and I, you know, it's, it's just really frightening to me. Well, no, I, I agree with you. That, yeah, because it's like, you know, there's this whole focus on UFO stuff right now, but it's like, 
there's so much yeah. like Bigfoot and other cryptid stuff going on too. It's like, where's the they, whole they, they, narrative on that with the government? You know, they like, don't know. That's yeah. the I can't say they for sure. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not privy to that information in, in as far as their truth, but in, in a way, I mean, they already know about it. If they didn't know about it, you know, you would think that there would be some kind of, you know, study or something going on, and we would know about that. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like they they're 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 not looking into it because they already know. <laughs> and like you say, the UFO thing, Bigfoot's been around since the, just as long as the Teddy Roosevelt, our our during president that created the national parks. Why did he do that? Mm, yeah. Okay. He, he had one. He saw it. And then we have all these national parks, state parks, and federal lands management. The land management. All. I mean, they. If you look on the topical maps and can have all of that information, the federal, the state, the the forestry, and all that, they all connect. And you know what bothers me too is there's caves like crazy around here. We have Luray caverns and all that here, and, and we have different types of caverns and and all that stuff. There's there's you know which actually they're lava tubes. I mean they really are. And the cave system from the east coast on the Appalachian Mountains on the Blue Ridge Mountains is it's vast and it runs the whole east coast. I mean. If you, you know, I mean, just do a little research on your own, you know, it, it's, it's like, I don't know. I don't, I just, I get so frustrated with this because I don't think that it's something that, that people should not be aware of before, because of safety. I mean, we've got kids that play outside and, and, you know, and out here, that's the reason why I moved out here was to get my son away from the city. Because I didn't want him growing up a thug, you know. I wanted him to have good, honest, you know, upbringing and to be, not be, you know, tempted by that. And when, when you, you know, they're going to go, he, he would go play in the woods and stuff. And not that I would just let my kid run off in the woods, but, but the, we were surrounded by woods, you know. And he's hunting and, and stuff like that with his cousins and uncles and my granddaddy, you know. And it's just, it, 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 being the mama that I am and the fierce grandma that I am, I do not, I want to keep our children safe. Just like I want to feed us. I don't want to feed no other nation or not, nor look after nobody else's. And I want to close our damn borders and take care of what we got here. Build our stockpiles back up and, and not help everybody else, but help us first. How dare they do that to the, these Americans? That, that's treason to me. The president's supposed to take care of us and be a, be a Republican or Democrat. No, not one of them have, are, are doing that anymore. Shame on them. You know, I just, I feel so adamant that these, that people need to know and keep your baby safe, you know, and my baby's 30 years old. He's still my baby. And if I could go, I'd to take a bullet for him. And he knows about him now. Cause you know what else happened at his house? After I left there, I will, I'll tell you while I was there watching the dogs, right? Scott Carpenter was had I started watching the, the stuff really really a lot. Sure. And I watched Scott Carpenter before he passed, and he was he had something about the four four rocks or four marbles or something. He said they would always take three and leave one by itself, right? Well, my son being born, born and and just like his mama, I was single mama and I raised that boy good, <laughs> but he had a, a fire pit outside, right? And he had some logs sitting off. Of it that weren't burnt always, they partial burnt, you know what I mean? So I took four rocks and spaced them out evenly and laid it upon the rock, the board, the, the log. And do you know, I come back two days later and they did, it was three and one. What does that mean? You know, they did the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I asked my son, I said, I said, did you notice them rocks I put up there? I didn't tell him where, where I put them none. I just said, did you notice them rocks I put up there? He said, what rocks? You know, looking at me all strange. And I said, I put I put just three little rocks on your wood near your fire pit. He said, no, I didn't notice that because it was during the week. So he he really didn't have time to go out and mess with no fire or nothing. You know, he hadn't been outside doing that. Well, 
then I asked him and I told him uh, that something hit his house. And I told him what happened at my sister's house. He goes, Mama, his wife uh, was walking their dogs out outside, right? And she heard laughing. And she said it, but it didn't sound human. It was weird. And I was like, what do you mean? Like the hyena laughing like a Lion King? You know, I was just trying to play with her a little bit. But I know what she was talking about, unfortunately. But I don't want to scare her. And, you know, and she goes, no, it was different. And I said, well, that's odd. And then my son calls me and he goes, Mama, you never believe what's going on, what happened at the house last night. And I was like, well, what happened? He goes, something was trying to get in my back door. And he goes, and the dogs wouldn't do nothing, wouldn't even go in the, in the kitchen where the back door was. They And this is a Stash China Terrier, you know, the big pit bulls the true ones from he paid twelve hundred dollars for this thing the blue one and it's huge his name's bjorn and his his chest is bigger than my hand he's a big ass dog and he's purebred and then the grand pyrenees they're huge too neither one of them would go in the kitchen and my son said he grabbed his 12 gauge and went in there and pulled the blind up on the door and all he saw was hair he could it, it one of them was trying to get in his back door, but he couldn't it's like they couldn't get their fingers in the handle. You know how the head they had the long handles, those long black handles with the button in the middle. That's why his opening to his screen door is on his back of that house. He was renting. And it's like he said it kept hitting that button, but it, it's like it couldn't get its hand in the handle to pull the door open. It could it could hit the button to open it. And he said he goes he goes, you better, he said something to her, like, you better reach around and kiss your ass goodbye because you're getting ready to eat some lead, you know. And my, he said he cocked and, and was going to blow it through the door, and it, and it jumped down, off at the back of his, the porch and ran off. He said, but he couldn't even see its head. All he could see was its chest. That's wild. Isn't that frightening? My goodness, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if, if and then... Then that ain't even it. That's not even nothing. I mean, I've got more. You would not believe. Okay, well, like I said, it's made me scared dark, right? Right. I went and saw one of my friends up the road. She probably lives four miles from me. I hear we judge it by miles because we're rural. We just we don't have straight. You know, the roads by mm-hmm. us by the road number. You know, yeah. and and landmarks. <laughs> well, I was up at her house for a little bit, and it was getting dark, you know. She's used to me just hanging out till whenever, doing our whatever we do, right? And leaving at all odd hours in the morning or coming home early or whatever. She never, I mean, never leaving like I wanted to leave that day. So she was pressuring me to stay. And I was like, no, it's getting dark. I'm going home. And I told her what happened, you know? And I'm not saying she believes me. She don't, I don't know. She didn't judge me. And you know, she was kind with that. So, but by the time I got back home, it was dark as shit. And, Sometimes when when out here dark is dark, you can't see shit. So I got out my Jeep and I was coming to into I live in a camper. I pulled a camper to my parents' house and so I can have privacy and I smoke and I don't I have enough respect for them. I don't smoke in their house or nothing like that, you know. And and for my privacy too as well. So I was coming to the camper and this is a travel trailer, it's twenty eight foot long. And when I got out to look my vehicle I could feel something around me and I got that, I got that eerie feeling. And so do you know how you stomp at something like a dog or something that comes at you like, don't you do that? Or whatever you stomp at something, like try to scare it. Yeah. I did did that. I went, get away from me. You know, and I stomped at it like that. It ran, it started running and ran off, but it was, it ran and I could feel the, the vibration of it. Every, every footstep when it started running off it shook the ground it shook the ground it shook the ground i mean that's heavy i'm sorry i didn't mean to do that but i mean it's just it freaked me out so bad i couldn't get in this camper fast enough you know locking the doors and all that i've had them i've had them rock my camper i've yelled at them and they've left me alone after they did that i've had i've seen them uh, across the street from here, up in a tree, they, it's a cedar tree over here. They've been, they have two seats in this cedar tree. They've pulled the branches, so it looks like motorcycle bars. Like I used to have a, a buckhorns on my my bike. It looks like they they sitting there 
with the with the handlebars in the cedar tree. And the top of the cedar tree has like a fork in it. Like a, it looks like a darn trident. What do they call the the thing he holds? Oh shit! The side and holds it. Yeah, it's a trident. I can't even think yeah. of the name of it. Trident. Yeah. yeah. It, it the top of the cedar tree it has a trident in it. And I just thought that was odd. You know, and why why the cedar? But see where where that is. He can it. You can see right into my my camper right from there. Mm. But then I started noticing, like, there's my mama has three acres here, and the back part of the property, they she has a bunch of uh, pine trees and well, we got hardwoods here, all kind of you know hardwoods, gum trees, oaks, chestnuts, and and stuff like that. And we also have cherries and a cherry tree, apple tree, pear tree, and peach trees and grape vines. We have figs and we have fruits and stuff. And my parents still, you know, I learned canning and how to make wine and jellies. And, you know, I learned old school, but I mean, that's just the way I was raised anyway. So, but we have that, that stuff here, but I could, I was cutting grass and I went down to, because we have a power line too that runs through the property. And I was cutting down the power line and it's coming back up near these things. And I noticed, I mean, I, you can tell storm damage, especially as tight as these pines and stuff are up in there. It's so thick. And you can tell because if, if something's going to break or whatever, it's going to take more than one over as tight as it is. You know what I mean? And, and the trees here, they about probably about 50 years old. They have no small little trees but but it's been a it was a pasture at one time, but they the trees are fifty years old, which means they probably about ten inches round, you know what I mean, ten, fifteen inches round. So they're not small little trees, you know, but they're but they're tight. And I started noticing stuff back there. X's and stuff. And and that's after, you know, I started getting freaked out on it, right? And then I noticed there's a certain spot over here on the other side of our grapevine. And there was two spots in the in the grass, and it, it, it the grass was some had been standing, laying, whatever there so long that it, it made two bare spots, right? And I so I was like I could never figure out what the heck the bare spots were, and they were like the size they were like ten inches long, you know what I mean? Or, or I can't even I don't even know if it's ten or whatever, but it was bare, but it, but it, there was two of them right side by side. So I stood. And that on them bare spots, and it's looking right in my mama's house. And she has big picture windows, and the big, like her whole kitchen is high under sinks, is big, huge, beautiful windows. You know what I mean? And they, I mean, she has blinds and things, but this is the back of the house. So she has blinds, but she's, they're always open to let light in. And, you know, it, it's whole, all windows back there. And, and I, then I found two more. A spot where there's two more so it looks like something's been standing in these two spots you know and it's done killed the grass there and it's weird and so i showed my nephew and my son and they was like well you know you can't tell what it is mom because it's just killed the grass and i was like yeah but why is it right here and and, and they were like well i don't know and, I, and my nephew was like well maybe it's a cat or something laying there and likes that spot. I said, why would they do you know, why would they have two spots like that? And then there's two more, another thing over there like that, you know, two spots that are dead, you know, the grass is killed. Why is there another spot like that? What is that? You know, what's up? I ain't never seen that. And they couldn't answer me. So that's not all though. And when I have, I have friends, girlfriends that come over and they'll stay in the with me in, in the camper and stuff to stay a couple days with me or whatever. Well, my friend has been here, I shouldn't say, well, anyway, she's been here a couple times and I was telling her what that, what is happening around here because I, you need something, you feel like you really need somebody to talk to with this crap because if not, you're going to drive yourself crazy. You really are. You're going to, then you, you're just going to really question your sanity and they rocked the camper. It, it rocked the camper what, here when she was here. I have the the camper's brace chalked, you know, where it won't roll nothing. And it didn't rock it forward and back, but it rocked it from side to side enough that it was, it, it just knocked her off the couch. I was asleep and I didn't pay attention. I guess I'm just, I don't know, it didn't wake my, my butt up. But it woke her up and she got scared. And, and then 
this last time, not even two weeks ago, there was a face in my um, front window. Well, you've got to be at nine foot tall, well, eight foot tall to put your face, be able to see your face in the front window in the camper. And then I got like a like a handprint on the on the side window of the camper that that looked like oily crap, but it was sideways. And you could the only I could make out really good was like the middle finger and just part of the palm. But you could see that was really oily looking. But the but the other fingers you could see where they were, but they weren't as as gross looking. <laughs> you know that stuff's happened. And then I was going right here down the street from me. If you like four city blocks down, there's a, a man that raises uh, hogs, right? Then a lot of people here raise, you know, meat and and chicken, you know, the meat products for us because, you know, you I'd rather buy natural and they make a living like that and and they'd also sell, you know, to what whoever. But anyway, this man had a bunch of piglets and stuff, and then right across the hearts, I was going to the store, a country store down here. And the power line runs there. And I don't know if you ever notice when you're driving and you go the same route all the time, you always look like it's the same things. I mean, you have like certain things you always look at. And for me, I always looked up that pot, that that power line. I don't know why I always did. And I saw the head, like I just saw this red. It was like a burnt, a dark, dark, burnt orange, reddish thing. I saw looked like a head. And I just something told me to see what it was looking at, like it was peeking around uh, uh, and looking. And it was the piglets. It was looking across the at these piglets and see at this edge. It's got like a, a swampy area, wetland, like you know. And you can see where something done laid down trees, and they're touching like a Z, like you wouldn't have to walk in the water. It, it, it made like a. Uh, but that was the first one I ever saw was up that power line, and I what I didn't believe what I saw. I didn't I couldn't figure out what it was. I didn't know what it was. That's odd, you know, because it was a cedar tree. It was behind, so it was and it was daylight and it was bright, and so it stood out. I mean, it really stood out. It was weird, and it and then I, when I was leaving the store and come back, I looked back up there and it was gone. But you could see where it pulled the 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 part of the cedar tree over like it was tied in itself and that one only saw from like the mid short like breast up but not breast but like above the breast the shoulders and the head and i didn't i mean it was far enough away couldn't make out the you know facial features of it and plus i was driving and so i just glanced and i was like what the heck and that was the first one that i had saw but i didn't believe i saw it and now I think it was because of those piglets, and you could see where. It, and I've actually noticed the, they the you know the trees and stuff over there are, are odd, and and they it laid stuff across the water like it was making where it didn't have to walk in that black swampy, because the dismal swamps all through Virginia too, you know, through North Carolina, Virginia and stuff. But it, we have the swampy areas, and it's it's black, gross, smelly. Then plus the pigs over there, you know. <laughs> I don't know, but it's absolutely yeah. wild. Um, your <laughs> your fun, area, though. yeah, right. Your area <laughs> with the trailer, your trailer. When you're in the trailer, yeah. or yes, yeah, our uh-huh. camper. Do you ever hear anything weird outside? So you have like the, uh, it pushes you back and forth. Do you ever hear anything out there? I've heard a grunt and stuff, but uh-huh. you know, a, a deer will grunt, and I know right. that you know, but I can't say that it's that it's that you know what i'm saying but i feel like they was they was messing with me you know what i'm saying just playing because it, they would do it every once in a while i have my dog in here with me and i have a little kitty that she's tiny but when the dog jumps down it doesn't make the the camper move or nothing really you know it doesn't make anything move and we were all back in the back of the camper and i was laying down and something took the camper and rocked it again and, and and it was like it kept it would come back like every hour or two hours and just push on it like a run pass by push it and and do that and say so finally I got mad because it kept waking me up I was like leave me the f alone you know I was fussing at it like I was fussing to your kid or I'm gonna come out there and you know blah 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 you know because I was tired but I mean and, and then it didn't bother me anymore that night but it it's not the last time but but I I'm very vocal and. 
if it, if something starts messing around here, like that thing in that tree, uh, I saw it and I, I had taken a picture, but it, what they say is a blob squatch, you know, but I mean, you can see the darkness. You can see it in the cedar tree and you can see, I can show you them branches. They done pulled them around and they look like motorcycle home, handlebars in there where they sit, you know, and it's two, it's two levels to it. But I, I could tell that, you know, they say that you got, you feel something watching you. Well, the weird thing is I was sitting in the camper and I could feel something watching me. And I was like, what the, you know, why am I feeling this way? And I just, I have a, a club chair and they swivel, it swivels and rocks and stuff. And so I swiveled around and I just looked at, through the window thinking that somebody might have pulled into the driveway or whatever. So I started, um, excuse me, I started looking in the, I'm getting, I can't breathe. <laughs> It's, it's very frightening. I thought that it was somebody that had pulled into the driveway, like the UPS guy or the mailman or something like that, that I'd have to go out, you know, out and, and take it into my parents or and stuff like that. So I looked out and I don't, I noticed something, this cedar tree is across the hard surface road on the people that live over there on their property. And I noticed something dark in there because it was the middle of the day again. And I was like, what the heck? You know, what is up in there? And the more I looked at it, I, I just started, like, looking at it, just staring over there to see if it moved or whatever. And damn it, it didn't. <laughs> it moved. It, like, went up the tree. Freaked me out. Almost. <laughs> I was like, I started yelling. And I opened the window. I said, don't you even think about coming over here. You stay over there. You know, I was <laughs> like, he's going to listen or whatever it was going to listen to me. But it, <laughs> right. it went up the tree. I mean, but I, I'm just like, Adam, it's going to hear me. It's going to know I don't want to hear. You know, I mean, that that's my only defense is to be loud. And because, and like I said, I'm just, I have a neck injury. So, and it affects my back and my, my neck and my arms. And I, and to feel, to be depressed about, I can't do the things that I want to do. It affects me. It affects my walk and then my balance and it affects a lot, you know, and to feel frail in the first place and then to have something like that be almost a threat. Well, no, not almost, but is a threat. It's very, it's very upsetting is all I can tell you. You know, I don't want that. Yeah. I don't want this shit happening to me. I want to know what the hell they are so I can either banish the bitch, kill it, or do something. Because I don't care who, what. I just want it to leave me alone. And it seems like everywhere I go now, it's something, they follow me. Or I can feel them around me. They're everywhere. It's it's just, it's almost paranoia. And that's why I'm thinking, that's why I'm like, I'm half cracked. I'm too... I'm not the brightest crown in the, in the, in the box, you know, <laughs> something's going on. I mean, I, I even accused my mama of not dropping me when a baby, but throwing me. <laughs> I was like, what? You know, it's crazy. It just makes you feel so out of sorts and so weak. I'm so, it's, I'm so, I just, we're, we're they wanted to hurt us. Oh my goodness. You take one could take out how many of us, you know what I mean? Just oh, one. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm, I'm, and the one I saw at the pylon was that, like I said, it was that rust color, that darker, darker than orange, but lighter than red. It was in between that, like that burnt orange, or you know, I don't know, I, I don't know. I, I, oh, and one of them just sparkled limb up here on our. I have we have white oak and we have pin oak and we have red oak and stuff. We have a lot of hardwoods here. They took a, a branch just now, just this week, and the, the branch was like five inches around circumference of it and just snapped it off. It snapped off and it won't know when, no nothing. And we ain't had no, no no storms, nothing. Wow. So it wasn't it, it wasn't it was not rotten or nothing. Then it was high enough where nobody could reach it. No no it was it's on the power line here, but it, it just was snapped down, straight down and it was laid it was snapped to the point where it was laid up close to the tree. And and all I could think of was like a blind, you know what I mean, to to block to like a blind. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, I mean, what the what the heck? So, you ever feel like a Jeremy? Come over here and shoot them bitches and get them away from me. 
do something. Oh, Find out go. what these are so we can protect ourselves. That's what I want to know. Right. It's only for protect. If it's a spiritual being, we have dominion. God granted us dominion. You know, if it is. And that's what I think it is. And, 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 you know, like I said, there's certain things in the Bible. There's like three things that really draw my attention and, and you know, in the Bible that they could be, I, I can't say, cause I'm not an expert. I'm not dumb, but I'm very curious only because they're, they're messing with me. And, and I feel like, uh, they, you know, the thing is, it, like the other week when that, that thing space was in the, the, the space, that was in my window was tan. It was, it was almost like a, like the, it was a brown, like a brown face. The eyes were wider, but you couldn't, you couldn't see any, I, all I could see it was its face. I couldn't see like hair to it like, cause it was dark. It was, it was might've been black cause it was dark outside. And my friend Terry was here and she saw it. I said, do you see this face over here? All I did was put the curtain down. I like shut the curtain in his face. I mean, what am I going to do? I, and I said, you better get the hell away from me. You know, <laughs> I closed the window, shut the curtain. And I was like, get the hell out of here. You know, I mean, but I mean, I don't know what else to do. I don't know. I don't know. I, I would need an elephant gun. I need well, something. Yeah. Cause I, <laughs> have you have you considered putting uh, game cams, game cameras up around your place? Uh, we've got game cams. My my whole family is hunting, fishing, you know, country people that that love all the outdoor stuff. There's game cams all around here. How close? Nobody's to your, on. How close to your trailer? Um, uh, uh, there's not one on my camper. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. There's one on the other side of my mama's house, but I don't have any. I, I don't. Okay. I mean, my son right here, somebody can put some up. I, I it's it's hard enough getting somebody to put a darn light bulb up for you on the yeah, outside yeah. lights. <laughs> you. you know, because yeah. everybody's got their lives. But I stay here because my father, like I said, my father just passed, and my mother, I'm not gonna let her be alone. And right. she, you know, she has her privacy, and I have mine. That's the only reason why I'm in in the camper outside is because, like I said, I smoke. Mm-hmm. And this crap right here is not going to let me quit cigarettes for a long time. <laughs> and I was thinking, right. I was gonna, uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to, Marlboro is going to have my business until the day I die. Because <laughs> it's just, it's made me so frightened. I, I am so frightened and terrified to the point where it's only because it's a, it, the size of them. But I have to cling to the, to the fact that they did not hurt me. You know, and, mm-hmm. and the thing could, the thing was, was, I mean, not only just that one black one, but that, that gray one, it was, it was almost a gray to almost white. But like I told you, I thought it was a big fat dude with a white shirt on, a bald, yeah. <laughs> you know, I thought it was worker and the, big, the closer it got, the bigger. And it was just, it was an adult. It was a bigger than the black one. And this one was thick. This one was, was what you would, would expect to be and mm. not that lanky black one, the first one. So then I started thinking maybe it was a that was its child or kid or whatever you cub or I don't know what the hell you would kidding, you know. <laughs> maybe it was its its parent, you know, to the black one is all I can think of is why they were together, yeah. you know, that day. Oh God, so, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I I am just it it makes me have anxiety. If you can tell, I'm talking so fast and. Oh no! You're, so, you're going through some stuff for sure. The camp, the camper stuff is happening current day. Yes. Wow. Well, the, like the last thing that happened is the handprint in the face. They hadn't pushed on us on it on it really anymore that I've noticed. But like I said, my daddy just passed away, mm-hmm. and I've been staying over in the house with my mother and and comforting, you know, trying to comfort her with her time of, of dealing with her losing the love of her life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I've been, I'm in the camper now, but they don't want her. I don't think they really want to mess with me. Cause I, I'm not very, I'm, I'm a spitfire. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> I don't let you mess with me, but I had to be, cause I was the youngest. They had four older sisters that would pick on me. Right. <laughs> you know, you get to a point in your life where you're like, screw this stuff. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <it's> all. <laughs> your but your anyway. son is he in the house anymore? Where they tried to to get? In the um, house? No, he moved. 
he moved to probably about three miles down the road from it. Okay. Now, all this is, her- is happening within a three mile. Oh, if you yeah, if man. you even put a dot a dot in the middle of all of this, where the places like my sister's farm, my son's rental house, my old house, and where I'm at now, it's a three mile radius. You know, uh, as a crow flies, because out here, and uh, in, in being the foothills and and ravines and stuff. You can drive eight miles and and down the road and by the crow flies it's only three miles. You know right. what I mean? It because you have to go down hills and up up hills and then turns and you know it's really a windy country road. It's just beautiful. Virginia is so beautiful, and you know it's 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 just crazy. It's just really freaked me out. But you know what the weird thing is? Is I was reading the David the missing person's David Polly's Polly's yeah. or whatever his name is. Yeah. Polly. He was doing that that study and what they were talking about, the Germanic backgrounds of these people. And that's what my family is from. My daddy's people were from Austria and my mama's people were Dutch, Swedish, right? And Viking and stuff and the Scandinavians and stuff. And then we lived near a nuclear power plant. I'm in the red zone. I always joke to my friends because it's true. If anything happens... I ain't got nothing to worry about. Y'all the ones gonna get sick. <laughs> I'm gonna be dying. You know what are you doing? I was. I'm gonna be dying instantly because we have the power plant here. In fact, my son. I can't even say that. Anyway, but he's moved three miles from where he was, and he still hunts and stuff. He's 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 not scared. He's a manly man. The boys. I call him Sasquatch, and they're just joking with him because it's, he has a size 15 shoe. I mean, he's big. <laughs> you know. And he's not, but he's not scared to go hunting and stuff. And he still does. And he, but he knows about these things. And it does, it hasn't scared him to the point where he's going to quit getting his meat and his stuff for his freezers and to feed his, his family. He's not going to stop, you know. And I can understand that. But, you know, if it was up to me, he wouldn't be doing none of that. You know, he, he'd, he'd stay at the woods. Just, just stay at the woods. You know, unless you got to go in there, don't go in there. You know, I just don't want nothing to happen to anybody. You can't help it. It's, that's what they've installed in me is that fear. Oh, yeah. It's frightening. Lori, it sounds like uh, this area that you're in in Western Virginia, I mean, it's got a lot of stuff going on from, I mean, yeah, there's a and lot going hear, on. But you don't hear a lot from Virginia. You hear North Carolina, West Virginia and stuff. And I don't know why, but I mean, they, like I said, being that these people here, I mean, Virginia is the oldest state in the game. First one, Yorktown, you know. And and these people are older people, mainly that family's been here since my family. We've traced them back to the 1600s here. My lineage is long, and that's how it is here. You know, a lot of these families there have been here all their lives and all of their families' lives and all of their relatives since way back when. And they're, they're not people to – don't talk none, won't be none. I mean, is what I can tell you. They don't talk like that. They don't do that. Now, if there is a threat, they're going to let their neighbors know, but it's not going to be shouting out and letting everybody know. And, I mean, that's just, just how they are. It's just like you don't go up on nobody's property out here trying to poke around. <laughs> and, and I'm telling you the truth. It's it's more rural than much, you know, just because Washington is up, you know, closer to us and stuff. Uh-huh. This, this is country here. Yeah. And they will shoot you. You know, Absolutely. and you don't go on nobody's and you, you better know respect and, and manners, you know, mm-hmm. that's just the way it is. And it, But they're not the type of people to, to be screaming it out. Unfortunately, here at home, because I'm screaming it because I just want people to know for safety and I don't want any children to be hurt. I don't want anybody's babies, anybody's brother, anybody's cousin, anybody's nephew, grandson, anything, grandchildren, grand, you know, daughters. I don't want anybody hurt from this. Because it's it needs to be known, just for a safety aspect. I mean, please, you know, please let people know. Please let them know. If you ever see one of these things, you need to tell. Because if you don't, then shame on you. You know, shame on you. I just just the way I feel. I mean, because the the way that they insinuated to us back in the day that you would have thought just Pacific Northwest in your area, you know. Not here on the East Coast. I'm right here. I can go to Washington up to the, go up to the darn White House in, in three hours, and not that I'd like to. I know I don't go up north. 
I don't go any higher than where I'm at. I don't need to. Y'all keep it, you know. But I mean, that's just the thing. It's it's they're everywhere. They're not just there. And for our children's sake, you need to to let people know. And and I appreciate you, Jeremiah, for doing this because it is a service, and it's a good thing. So so you should be very 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 proud of yourself because people keep keep your family safe. If you think about their strength and their size and what they can accomplish, and even with the the weird crap that they can do with with the, oh, God, I don't even want to get into that mess. I mean, come on. All it takes, one could wipe out how many people? I mean, how many people could just one do, you know? And how many are there? I mean, come on. (laughs) It's scary. It's very scary. Yeah, and Lori, it's it's a wild thing, and, and you're absolutely right. I mean, people, when they've... If they've seen something, they need to they need to say something. They can definitely, you know, reach out. They can email me directly at Bigfoot Society at gmail dot com, and this just helps other people realize what's in their area. I'm gonna guess when you tell your sister what ha- what you saw, she's gonna say, mm-hmm. "I already know." I'm I'm kind of waiting. Yeah, for her to tell me. I'm kind of doing that because like I said, it's, it's a, I don't know what my problem is because I've told, I mean, I've told my, some of my nieces and I have a large family. I really do. I mean, there's five of us and, and, and they're all girls. I'm the baby princess anyway. And she's the oldest, like I told you. And so she's, a, she's always been more of a mother to me than a, a sister as far as she's always been the oldest. I'm the baby. So there's a different, in our relationship than her saying in my second oldest sister, you know what I mean? So I told the second oldest sister trying to get her with information to my oldest in a way, you know, I don't know what my problem is with that, but don't think that I wouldn't as far as her safety. And I know for a matter of fact that she does not go to the farm without somebody with her. She goes every day, takes care of her horses and stuff. And, but I know that she's got people with her. You know, because of my my nieces and stuff, and because all of the children they they love the horses and stuff, and so they go with her and her husband there. So I don't, as far as safety goes, put it that way. Absolutely. But I mean, it, I, I I just unfortunately, but I had the uh, luckily, like I said, I had I was on video chat on Messenger right. off Facebook, and then the video call with my friend, and then I called my sister on the same thing, just that so she could see it. You know, so I, so people would, I don't, I had witnesses and then my friend has witnessed things here. So I'm not, I'm done. I just feel I'm not that, that shit crazy, but I'm close. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) You know, we we all are. It's fine. Lori, (laughs) it's been, it's been really fun chatting with you. I mean, you've got some wild stuff going on down there. Please don't hesitate to reach out if any other weird stuff happens or if you, you know, you can always, you know, share, share my Thank contact you. info with, you know, anyone else that if they get to a point where they oh, want to talk, you know, definitely if they feel like I can reach out share, to that. You know. I'll reach out to that dude on that, on the app and see if I can get him to, to email you. Totally. That would be yeah. amazing. Yeah. Anyway, Cause he wanted to talk to me. I gave him my phone number and, and, and told him he could call me. And, and, you know, I, I, it, I was practicing because I don't want to scare them with these children, but I don't want them to be, you know, snatched or, yeah. or hurt. No, he needs to know, and yeah. that's why I was adamant about getting to him because of the, the children and, you know, the precious. I, I just that they're our gift from God. A child is a gift and you better take care of it, you know. Absolutely. And that's the way I look at it. And I, I can't help it. And I, I'm, I'll, I'll do anything I can for any child on this planet and, you know, keep them safe and, and, and do anything I can. And if it's something to make me look batshit crazy, like I say, and have that beautiful white coat that, with the wrapping arms, I don't care. I'm going to do it because they need for our protection. And that's the way, that's what I am been raised for and how I've been raised. And I will do it to the day I die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just that type of person, but I uh, thank you for listening to me. And and this is therapy. It, you know, it's it's just to have somebody that believes you is 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 what we need to. And it's it's helping me. 
you know, I've only told this story to like that guy Steve on how to hunt. Like I told you, I wrote yeah. to him yeah. because I, I needed somebody to talk to. I couldn't find any kind of anybody out here to talk to that that would understand what I'm going through. I mean, you can tell your friends and your family all you want, but unless they go through it themselves, it's it's really nothing that you can. Yeah, I can't express it to give the impact of that situation that, that it was impaled on me. I mean, it was, I feel like it was just forced upon me and, and, and you know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I just, I didn't ask for it. I didn't go looking. I ain't knocking on a damn tree like a dumbass or none like that. I ain't leaving no food out for nobody or none like that. Because like I said, we have bears here. We have mountain lions, which they say they don't exist, but yet they're killed up right up the street and got pictures of the boys in the store with the, with the tongue hanging out of this thing. And I mean, you know, and I, I just, oh God, it's just frustrating. But anyway, I, you let me vent. You're like my dear Abby. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's been a pleasure chatting uh, with you, you have- Lori, for sure. All right. Have a great night, honey. You too. Just want to take a few minutes to say thank you to you, all my listeners for listening to the podcast. Please take a minute to help out the show by subscribing on YouTube, making sure you hit the bell so you don't miss any notifications, and share the episode on YouTube with a friend. Also, if you're listening to us on a podcast, thank you so much. Make sure that you're subscribed, share the show with a friend. Really, it's all about sharing the show wherever you can. If you've had a Bigfoot encounter related to the following or know someone who has, please reach out to me at bigfootsociety at gmail.com or pass on my email. Here's a list. All right, I'm going to use this space uh, this week to announce that I'll be at the Sasquatch Summerfest in Oak Ridge, Oregon as an attender. I won't be presenting or anything, but I'll be hanging out trying to interview people that have had Bigfoot encounters. If you're from the Oak Ridge, Oregon area or surrounding and you've had a Bigfoot experience, please contact me directly, bigfootsociety at gmail.com. Also, Priscilla was nice enough that if you get your tickets through SasquatchSummerfest.com and use code Bigfoot Society, you can get 50% off the cost of your tickets, which is a big amount. So uh, code Bigfoot Society to get 50% off your tickets, SasquatchSummerfest.com, and that helps out the podcast as well. A special thank you to all the Bigfoot Society Patreon and YouTube channel members. It's your support that helps keep the show going, and I extremely appreciate it. One more thing. Okay, here's the deal. So we're at the point, guys, where it is, there's no stopping us. We are going to full-time podcast no matter what, but I need your help to get there. I figured it out and we need approximately 700 more people in the Patreon in order to reach our goal of going full-time, actually able to go to places, um, people that have been having Bigfoot activity, interview them face to face, check it out for myself, all that good stuff. If you guys can, guys, this is, this is the time. If you can at any time become a supporting member of the Bigfoot society, go to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot society. I would appreciate it. It's going to help us get to the next level, uh, pretty much the final level. You guys are amazing for listening. If you can't become a supporting member, please share this episode everywhere you can. Share it with anyone who's into Bigfoot encounters. And that means a world to me as well. Thank you all for listening. And we'll see you next time.
everybody can get on here and we can tell our stories. Maybe there's somebody else out there listening that's too afraid to tell their story. Maybe this will give them the courage to come out and not feel so bad about it. Who cares what anybody thinks? I know what I saw. I know what's out there. That's all I care about. people know. Please let them know. If you ever see one of these things, you need to tell. Because if you don't, then shame on you. You know? Shame on you.